we can kind of we can kind of look at the past of this year and we can see triumphs and we can, we can see defeats. We can see a lot of different things in our lives. Things, that happy moments, sad moments. We can see a lot of things. We can look back at the past and keep holding on that past. Or we can say, well, Lord, thank you for getting me through that. Yeah. And that, that it will not... The past will not have a hold on me anymore. Now, as we enter this new year, we need to have great expectations. Instead of expectations, I'm saying great expectations. That we see that these expectations that we have are great and not expectings of defeat. Too, too many people live this world and they kind of go think, well, it's going to be the same old, same old thing. Everything is uh, just mundane. Everything is just doldrums. And they keep thinking the way that's the way the last year was. Or, oh, I went through so much last year. Or they need to start looking at it differently and start looking at, hey, Lord, with your help, I'm going to look for great expectations great expectations that you're going to do more and I'm going to do more through the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to do more in me, in my family, in my finances, that everything I'm going to do is prosper. I'm going to change my whole vision. I'm not going to let things of the past cloud my vision and not going to say, well, here we go. Here we go again. No, we're going to say, Lord, I'm expecting not just better, I'm expecting the best. I'm expecting the best, and I have great expectations. I want us to look at Ephesians chapter 3, verses 12 through 21. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 12 through 21. And with the idea that we're looking at our expectations, that our expectations are going to be greater. Mm. That all the things of the past, that we're going to be overcomers of all the hurts, all the trials. Mm. We're going to be overcomers because we're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb. Well, in Ephesians 12, it says, in whom we have boldness and accent, access with confidence by faith in him. Boldness. I'm saying this year, we're going to approach this year with boldness. Amen. That we're going to, not with, mm. oh no, here we go again. It's, you know, I'm getting older. It just seems like it's just getting worse. No, I'm going to say boldly. You know, it tells us in Matthew 14, 16, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne mm. of grace that we may attain mercy and find grace in the help in time of need. See, one of the problems that we've had in the past, in the past years and this, is that we'd go through tribulations, but we didn't go boldly to God to say, hey, you will help us out. Now, there are times that we have, but we're going to have to remember, no matter what we go through this year, we're not going to lose our confidence. Oh, Our okay. confidence, we're going to be boldly come before God with confidence. And when we look at the word confidence, it means to confide. Amen. We are going to confide in him Amen. through our faith. And Amen. our faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things are not seen. So we're going to operate and so we're going to go boldly to the throne of God so we can receive that mercy and grace that God is going to get us through it, that we're going with faith, which means that we're going with bonus, that we're going to trust him in all things, not in just some things, but in all things. We see in Ephesians 3.13, it says, Wherefore, I desire, this is Paul talking to the Ephesians, that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which you, which is your glory. Paul says, 
okay, don't worry about what I'm going through. Don't worry what I'm going through. But he says, don't let what I'm going through affect you. Don't let it affect you. But he says that don't think not. Don't give up. Don't go weary over the circumstances that I'm going through, let alone the circumstances that you're going through. Yeah. So do not think, don't just say, I'm just going, I'm so weary. I'm so weary. But you know, it says that the scripture says that we should think not that we'll rise up and don't be mm -hmm. weary, but we'll rise up like eagles mm -hmm. and we'll run. You know, the problem is that we have too many times that God called us to be eagles, but we hang around turkeys too much. Yeah. We ground up too many turkeys that get us down. That's the reason why we need each other. We need each other to build each other up through the power of the Holy Spirit and God working in each one of us. Well, in Corinthians 4.16, in 2 Corinthians 4.16, you'd probably say, which Corinthians are you talking about? 2 Corinthians 4.16. It says, for this cause we faint not, but through our outward man perishes, Yet the inner man is renewed day by day. We, this body of ours, it's going to decay. The body is getting old. You know, sometimes we just don't feel like I can put one step in front of the next. Sometimes we just, just, we're just, just going through life and just the energy is exact. That's the reason why we need to pray that we have we have energy and enterprise every day. Oh, yeah. We need to renew our mind daily. We renew that mind. And don't let the things on this earth or even our body dictate what we can do or not do. Let the inner man give us strength that we can accomplish more Amen. through the power of God. Let our inner man mm -hmm. arise up in us. And the inner man mm -hmm. is what? What is the inner man? That is, yes. Jesus is our temple. Gee, oh, he is Lord. in our mm. in our temple. He resides in us. And so when mm -hmm. we feel like we're weary and we just cannot take another step or we cannot go any mm -hmm. further, we need to rise up and let that spirit rise up in mm -hmm. us and let that inner man mm -hmm. come up. And daily, we have to choose daily, yes. daily. As we get up every morning, mm -hmm. we choose to renew our mind. Don't let the past, don't let what happened yesterday, don't what, that it's a new renewing of the mind. Mm -hmm. And renewing is make the mind new again. Yes. Make our mind brand new each day. Mm -hmm. Each day. Don't let, well, well, the way they ha happened at work or what, what my dog did to me or what my what spouse did to me or what did these phone calls I had or what is that? Don't let that bother you. Do not carry one thing to the next. One thing, when I was teaching high school many, many moons ago, a lot of moons ago, <laughs> I'd, I'd have kids come into my classroom and the first minute or two, they were awful. They were totally awful, and they would seem like they attacked me, you know, and just being grumpy and just snotty and just all this. <laughs> oh, no. And I'd stop them, and I'd say, wait a minute. I didn't do nothing to you. What's going on? They say, well, Miss So-and-so, the teacher before me, got on to me. Or they said, I broke up with my girlfriend. And I said, do not let what them did to you affect my relationship to you? Yeah. That is in the past. Let go ahead. Don't let it dwell upon you. But see, that's what happens is we let our past dwell upon us. That wow. what happened yesterday, mm -hmm. we bring it in and we drag it into today. Oh wow! And we can't. We got to quit dragging in our problems in the day. Mm -hmm. We can drag. We've still maybe problems are still there, but we say, Lord, give me the solution to get Amen. through this. Renew my mind so I can think straight so I know how to tackle these problems in my life. So we see 
even though our outly man is perishing, we need to renew our inner man each day. Mm-hmm. We have to renew our expectations mm-hmm. every day that we're going to look forward to something new. You know, some you hear people talk about you got to live one day at a time. A good friend of mine that she died and went to heaven, and she said she was about 80 something years old there. And she told me, she says, Skip, very godly woman, she says, At my age, I don't live one day at a time, I live one moment at a time. Mm -hmm. And so that's what we have to do. We do not need to let these little moments affect us the way we are going to operate in the future Mm -hmm. and affect our expectations of what God has for us. Well, let's look at Ephesians 3.14. It says, and I'm going to go through 15. Now he's talking to the people and he's praying for these people to have spiritual strength, to have spiritual strength. It says, Ephesians 3, 14, 15 says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, for whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. So what is he really saying? What he is saying, we're going to have to get out of ourselves and start to pray for others. And when we learn to pray for others, we're getting out of our problems don't seem as big when we start praying for others. And we see that he said, for this cause, he humbles himself, not only to pray, but also to pray for the whole family of God, to pray for other people. So, as our new expectations we have for this new year, we need to say, I'm going to pray for others. I'm going to come boldly to the throne of God for to be intercessors mm. for other people. Mm. We look, let's look at Ephesians 3.16. 3, 3.16. It says that he, God, would grant you us according to the riches and glory to be strengthened with might by a spirit in your inner man. Mm. Well, what's he saying? He said that our spirit man, as we strengthen the inner man, the outward man starts to prosper. As we, if we're into depression, it's going to affect our whole being. It's going to affect our whole being that our mm-hmm. our outward man and our physical and mental abilities. So he is saying here, if we grant that he's praying that God would grant each one of them, and I'm mm-hmm. saying this to us, that he'll grant each one of us and strengthen us that the riches of his glory, yeah. that every need that we need mm-hmm. will be met. But it's because of our expectation. What is our inner man expecting? Uh, Is our inner man expecting mm. to still live the way, old way, to live in poverty Mm. or to live in prosperity in our spirit? Mm. We have to make a choice. Are we going to live in poverty or are we going to live in prosperity? What is your expectation? Are we going to live Mm. that nothing's going to change? It's always going to be this way. It's my lot in life. Are we going to say, no, Lord, through my inner man, you're going to strengthen me and I'm not going to faint anymore. I'm going to trust you through the faith I have in you and you will supply all of my needs, not according to what I think, but according what you think into your glory. Mm. So we look at that. So if Philippians 4, 19, and this is a verse that we all sometimes hear a lot. In Philippians 4, 19, it says, but my God 
All right, look at this. What did he say? But my God, it's not a God way out here that cannot be touched. It's not a God of somebody else, but it is your own personal God, your own personal Father. He says, for my God shall supply all, there's that word, all your needs according to his riches in glory by Jesus Christ. So as we trust Amen. Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we go and pray in the name of Jesus, which mm -hmm. Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father, and he Amen. brings us to sit next to him in heavenly places, as it mm -hmm. talks in Ephesians 2, that he brings us up to sit in heavenly places. And as we pray to God through the name of Jesus, by the unction of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. he makes intercession that what? Your need Amen. will be met? No, all your need will be met. Praise God. But it goes back. If we don't grow weary and we faint not, and we go boldly to the throne of God and yeah. ask. Now, these last few verses, I'm going to read these, and I want you to look at them differently. And when I read these, I'm going to read it as a prayer. I'm going to read it as a prayer over us. This is a prayer that I would like that mm -hmm. all of us will, will get it into our spirit. And mm -hmm. it's going to be through... 317 through 21. And I'm going to pray this over you and over myself and over the church that God will do what he says. And when we pray this, that our expectations will change. Our renewing of our mind will change. Our inner man will grow in this. So as I read these scriptures now, I want you to thank it as a personal prayer over you and over others. Mm. Lord, may Christ dwell in our hearts by faith that we will be rooted and grounded in love. May we comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height. And, to, and we will know the love of Christ which passes all of our knowledge. Mm. Lord, that's all of our knowledge. Mm. That we may be filled with your fullness, God. That you fill us to total contentment, total joy. Fill us with your spirit to overflowing. Mm. Father, now unto him, Father, unto us, unto Christ, that is able to do abundantly more above all that we ask or think. Mm -hmm. Change your way we ask. Let us come boldly to your throne. Mm -hmm. Change our thinking. Renew our minds daily. According to the power that worketh in us. Yeah. Let the Holy Spirit power rise up in us yeah. that will change our expectations mm -hmm. that we may feel the fullness of God. Unto him, unto you, God, be glory to our church. Change the expectations of our church. Oh, Lord, fill our church with your spirit. 
by Jesus Christ through all ages from every time as we go forward in every moment of every day fill us through the power that raised Christ from the dead quicken our mortal bodies quicken the church make us alive make us alive And give us the ability to take the gospel throughout the whole world. We ask this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen and amen. 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 amen.